Today, we're gonna go over some strategies for anyone who is low on experience but is ready to get a job and start their career. All right, the first strategy we have for people with low experience is to start thinking of your shortcomings as your strengths. And what do I mean by that? Take for instance, your salary, okay? If you are just getting started in your career, right, wrong, or indifferent, those with no experience or low experience usually start low on the salary totem pole, okay? Now that might seem like, uh, that's kind of a bummer for me, but think of it, if you're looking for a job and you're a hiring manager and you're interviewing this person that has low experience, if you come off as very coachable, very intelligent, you have education of the position, right? That hiring manager might just be thinking, wow, I could be getting a major value here. I have maybe one or two years that this person could well outperform the salary that I have to pay them, okay? And don't think of that as unfair. That is your foot in the door, and then you prove yourself, and when you have your reviews, if you're adding value, right, if you're producing revenue for your company, then you have a negotiation on your hands, right? Every review, you say, this is what I've done, now I want to be paid my fair market price. And if they don't, you have that skill set that you can take with you to another company. But okay, take that inexperience as an advantage that you are a cheap for hire. Turn those weaknesses into your strengths. So for this one, I'd like to start with a personal experience. I interviewed probably six years ago for a sales role, okay? And I had never had a a like a hard sales job this was gonna be we're talking banging the phones a hundred calls a day 50 emails okay just your your raw inside salesman I'd never done anything like that in my career and literally the hiring manager told me you know he kind of sat back it was getting it was getting serious this is maybe my third interview and he said okay Jim he goes um, there are many people that I am interviewing for this position that have more sales experience than you but I'm going to offer you this position because you seem very intelligent and also very coachable, okay? So what he meant by that was my lack of experience to him was a blank canvas, okay? So this person was great. This is still a mentor in my life. And he was so confident and he had proven out that his sales training works so well, right, for his employees. He sees me that he can train me right draw his painting on the blank canvas and make me an extension of himself okay what I didn't bring to the table was bad habits from a previous sales training right I don't have um, I didn't have bad coaching that's gonna be hard for me to shake right I had I had no pre um, preconceptions about what this role means right I was open I was willing to learn and this manager really liked that so again that maybe that lack of experience where it's viewed as a negative turn that into a strength that you bring no bad habits or um, any poor previous experience, okay? You are an intelligent blank canvas, and if that manager is confident in his training abilities, you are someone that can be easily trained and then carry out the mission. Okay, guys? Again, view every perceived weakness of low experience as a strength. I am a big fan of the phrase, you become the five people that you spend the most time with, okay? So let's say you just got back from college and you're reinserted to hang out with your high school friends. If they're still talking and acting the same way you guys did when you were in high school, that's probably not moving you forward personally, right? But if you come back and you are surrounded by high achievers, that is probably going to push you to also be a high achiever, okay guys? And this goes past who you just seek out in your everyday life. Think of your online presence on social media. Take a look at your Instagram or your Twitter. Look at the last 20 people you followed, okay? And then think of your profession and really what you want to become. What do you want your career to look like? Who do you want to be remembered for, right? Do you want to be a reality TV star, right? Then maybe that'd be okay to follow Kim Kardashian and all, all these people, whoever is, is big in that field right now, right? But if it's not, following those types of people is just kind of wasting your time. So I have some more actionable, actionable um, advice for that, right? So take your specific field and follow three levels of people, okay? You're going to start with the people at the very tippity top. So if you're in invest, investment banking, right, you're going to follow the Warren Buffetts of the world, right? These are people who have mastered their craft, right? They are world-renowned. 
and they're probably almost untouchable for you to contact though, okay? So you're gonna have to view them and see their work and what they say from afar, but you can still learn from them and you can still get a lot of value. Next, you take those that are in the middle to upper level. So they're still excellent at what they do, but they just haven't reached that almost celebrity status in the field yet. So these people, it's, it's great to follow them because they are still working hard and striving to become better. And also they are reachable. So that is someone that may answer an email, right? And you can form a relationship and maybe even a mentor mentee type situation if you play it right. And then the third one people often overlook is follow and communicate with people on the exact same level as you. Don't view that as competition. View that as potential collaborators. Everybody is so much more powerful and influential in a group. The lone wolf is not a great way to go about anything. So connect with people that are going through the same troubles and having the same successes that you are, like-minded individuals, and form yourself a little team. All right, so that is the tip right there. Surround yourself in your physical life and in your online life with people that A, you want to become, and people that are currently thinking like you, okay? If working is important to you, networking needs to be important to you. Tell me you haven't heard that before. But here we go. Here is two very simple ways that you can network effectively. Number one is just tell everybody you meet, everybody you know, what you are looking to do. You never know who somebody knows, okay? Everybody has somewhat of a network. If it's one person, if it's a hundred people, tell people until they're blue in the face what you're looking for. I have a story. I have a friend and he is a real estate investor and this was before he could call himself that. This is when he decided for my next career, I want to be a real estate investor. I want to be a property manager, a landlord. And he was telling everybody, hey, I'm gonna be an investor, right? I'm looking for an apartment complex. It's gonna be great, blah, blah, blah. Hey, I'm gonna be a real estate investor. I'm looking for an apartment complex. It's gonna be great. He's at church one Sunday, right? Sitting next to this cute old couple. Oh, you know, say his name was Brandon, right? Oh, Brandon, how you doing? That's my old, cute old couple voice. And Brandon says, great, I just quit my job and I'm going to become a real estate investor and I'm looking for an apartment complex. And the old couple kind of sits back and looks at each other and they say, well, that's funny, Brandon, because we actually own a 23 unit apartment complex and we're getting closer to the age where we'd like to not have to manage that anymore and we are considering selling. What? Boom. Long story short, Brandon bought the 23 unit apartment complex from this elder couple and it started his real estate career. He owns close to 100 units right now and that's what he does for a living, right? He decided what he wanted to do, he told everybody and he made it happen, okay? So that's it right there. Tell everybody what you're looking to do. I don't care if you're looking to work in sales, right? For a mobile company. Tell everyone, you never know who that person knows, okay? Talk about your passions, talk about your interests, guys. If you're talking about the weather, sports, and all that stuff all day, you're wasting valuable time, all right? Time is too precious to waste it talking about fluff, okay? Talk about things that are important to you and listen when other people are talking about things that are important to them. All right, the second thing that you can do that doesn't take a ton, well, it does take some effort, but to increase your networking is go to events. Sign up for everything that is somewhat related to the field you're looking to get into. Meetup.com is a great website, okay? If you join groups on Facebook, okay, they have events that they'll go to. And I'm talking physical events that you go to. Volunteer, I mean, if you have a company that you really wanna get in with, and you, you ask, you reach out to how you can volunteer, if they're having a some sort of corporate event, anything can I set the tables up can I take the tables down can I check people in right at the at the board meeting can I take notes volunteer anything get your face out there get in front of people guys I can't stress enough in this digital world these items yes it's important to network with these type of things but these can realistically only get you started okay 
To finish and complete your networking, you need to use this. You have to be out there, guys. You can't be behind a screen all the time. You gotta get boots on the ground and actually meet people and offer value. Don't be going around asking for everything. Be going around offering and when somebody that knows something starts talking, listen. All right, so there it is. That's just, yes, you need to network. And two big tips are show up, go to things, and tell everybody what you're doing and what you're looking for. They want to see who you're going to be every day. You are, let's face it, when you join a team, when you join a company, you are now a spokesperson for that company. I don't care if you're an engineer that's, that's locked behind his, that screen all day, I don't care if you're the janitor. You wear that company badge, you are that company. So that's it guys, right there. Just be a likable person. And if you have a hard time with that, simply practice it. And if you don't know, ask people close to you, say, hey, do I come off like, you know, nice or do I come off kind of grouchy? And just work on it guys, right? It's if, if you're excited and you're passionate about this position that you're applying for, you, you shouldn't have to work to fake that, guys. That, that should come out naturally. And if you're feeling it inside, but having a hard time portraying it, yeah, simply practice it. So that's it right there, guys. It's a human relationships game, this whole career thing. And one of my biggest advice is simply smile and be likable, say thank you, listen when others are talking, be respectable, guys, right? No, uh, I'm, not, I'm not breaking the atom here, right? This is simple stuff that sometimes we forget all right so that's all i have for now remember no experience should not be an excuse for no job take your weaknesses use them as your strengths build your network okay and get excited and get passionate about the thing that you are pursuing and go get it guys and smile while you do it thanks for watching uh, job experience number two lifeguard YMCA. Yeah.